Hello, I'm Jason Dragon from Emerald Computers, and here with another video about Ethereum, Ethereum mining, Ethereum trading. So up until now, I haven't really made a video specifically about trading, trading strategies. Um, I, I, I felt that other people had some good videos out there. The problem is a lot of people are making the videos too difficult for people who are just entering the field. So I'm here today to give you a basic little educational um, introduction on how to trade and how not to lose money and how to make a decent amount of money pretty quickly. Um, this works really, really well with cryptocurrencies. It would work also well with stocks, but at a much slower rate. Uh, stocks don't have the volatility that cryptocurrencies do. So first off, I'm going to tell you my background. I have a degree in business management. I took a lot of classes in macroeconomics. They were actually my favorite classes. Um, I also took a lot of classes in marketing and finance, but we don't care about any of that. When I graduated college, I decided to go into the computer business because that was the business that I knew enough about that I could have the most profitable business. And that was over 20 years ago, and I'm still doing it today, building and selling um, computers, systems, laptops, desktops, mostly doing a lot of repairs for my clients, um, my, my employees do, I mean, and um, I'm focusing almost exclusively on mining rigs and Ethereum. But I wanted to tell you about, I had a customer call me up a couple days ago, and it kind of depressed me because he just spent $12,000 buying some sort of trading class on how to look at technical analysis and all this stuff. The problem was he only had about $20,000 to invest in all of Ethereum. So they took 60% of his entire portfolio in order to show him how to invest. So, you know, first off, if you're an expert, don't take that much money from somebody, especially tr teaching them something that you can learn on YouTube. Um, you know, I mean, unless you're greedy and unethical, of course, you could do that. And if you're an investor, don't take more than like five or maybe 10% of your portfolio and put it on some sort of investing scheme or educational course, especially when there's so much good information already on YouTube and various other sources. Anyway, my rant's over. Let's get down to the how to forecast the future while trading. So, I look at cryptocurrencies as a giant flow. Right now, there's only a few places where money can come in and out of the cryptocurrency sphere. And here in the United States, that main place is Coinbase. And Coinbase has a trading platform um, that they own, and it's called GDAX. And this is GDAX right here. This is their website, GDAX. Um, it's a pretty cool little website. And then, of course, you can see uh, Bittrex down here. And this is Ethereum, uh, 30 minutes. Each little line here is called a candle. And those are 30 minutes each. So we're, we're seeing about a day right here. <coughs> and these are five-minute candles. And this is Polynex. And on GDAX, we're also showing you the five-minute candles. Now, one thing you're going to quickly notice right here, that GDAX is trading at 703 while Polynex is trading at 687. Well, that's bizarre. So why is there this, you know, $15 difference? Well, it's not always a $15 difference. Sometimes it's a $50 difference or even an $80 difference. And sometimes it goes the other direction where GDAX's price would actually be lower than that the price of Polynex. But if you do notice right here, they kind of follow the same pattern on both. Of course, people can send money between the platforms, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and that should equal out the platform. But why isn't it? Well, to me, it's all about the flow of money. And Coinbase slash GDAX, I'll just call it GDAX from now on because it's Coinbase and GDAX together. That's where the new money comes in. It's also when somebody wants to sell their Ethereum, it's where the money comes out. Here at Polynex and also at Bittrex, you're just trading USDT. You're just trading for dollars in your account that you cannot withdraw. So to me, 
it's not a real number. <clears throat> so what does this mean for you? It means that GDAX predicts Polynex and Bitrix. And I have found this to be true. I've tested it time and time again over a two-month period. And every time GDAX is $15, $20, $30 above Polynex, Ethereum is going to be rising against the dollar. And when it's the flip, when it's the opposite, when GDAX is below what you see on Polynex or Bitrix, then I see that Ethereum is going to go down in the near future. The reason that this is because of the flows. The only reason that GDAX would be going up is because people are buying the cryptocurrency. And most people who buy on GDAX are people bringing in new money into the cryptocurrency sphere. And you know the the not the wisdom of of the crowd shows you that people are buying in and that's going to cause the price to rise because there's new money coming into the environment polynex is just behind because they haven't caught on to that new money also if you see gdax below what you see on polynex then that's money leaving the cryptocurrency sphere in in general Mer i look at Cur these currencies is like a giant flow. So today, for example, we saw Ethereum and we also saw Bitcoin go down quite a bit. We're looking, if you can see right here, but I believe a good chunk of that money landed squarely on Ripple. Now, in the last couple hours, Ripple has been started. Well, let me click on the chart. Ripple's been going back down a little bit. See, just a little bit. Let's um, let's switch over to a 30-minute chart so you can see the whole day. Nah. Let's go to uh, 24 hours. So this is where it went up. It peaked, and now it's going back down. And this is a whole 24 hours. So, you know, this little roller coaster, I've noticed Ripple is kind of like the anti-Bitcoin, anti-Ethereum. When everybody has a red day, Ripple's green. And when everybody has a green day, Ripple's red. Ripple is pretty much the anti-cryptocurrency. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'll just let you figure that out. Um, you know, I don't really believe Ripple's a good investment. I, you know, of course, it's gone crazy this month. But a lot of, a lot of them have gone crazy this month. So anyway, so my little prediction number right here is you want to predict what the future is going to do? Well, just look at the difference between GDAX and something like Polynex or Bitrix. Because these ones, it doesn't necessarily lag, but it shows you the difference of the flow. Because I kind of look at it like water. So the water, you know, it's coming into GDAX, and that's going to raise everything up. And... These other ones, you know, it's going to raise the whole market. So that indicator of the difference between the two tells you the flow of dollars in and out of cryptocurrency. And every time I've checked it, every time it, I've done it, it works. So it it's made me some good money and some trading. So next topic we're going to talk about real quick is we want to make easy money, right? This is the whole goal of this thing. So you want to move money in, move money out, move money in. Um, you know, I actually have most of my money in Polynex because I can see the trades happening in GDAX and then after they've already happened in GDAX with using the GDAX as my history, I can go to Polynex and execute the trade and make the profit off of what already has happened in GDAX because Polynex happens a little bit later. And, you know, it, it's a great way to trade. So right now, with the charts the way they're looking right now, 702. So it's still about a $15 spread. I, you know, I would be somebody right now. I would be buying, um, buying some Ethereum with my dollars. I mean, heck, right now. Let me show you how to even do that. I can do that right now. Let's just do a limit order. Let's say right now the price is at 702. You know, if you look in the last few minutes, it's hit 702. So let's just buy. Ethereum, let's just buy at 702.50. Oh, 
702, and we can look at the charts. What are other people bidding at 702? Yeah, not too much. Let's hit plus so we can actually see it down to the penny. This is my little trick, and I'm going to talk to talk to you more about this here in a second also. So right here, 702.01, there's a little bit of people money, uh, people buying stuff. So if I do 702.02, .02, I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy that. So how much ETH do I want to buy? Well, let's see. I can. I have $641 sitting there right now. That will give me 0.9 Ethereum. So it's 702 is still the best trade. Let's place a buy order. Boom, done. You know, that's how easy it is to place a buy order. And if you, um, I'll show you what I did here in a second. So right here we have the 702. Oh, is my, my order. So it's 702.01. Just traded, you know, two minutes ago. So let's see if it goes back down. <coughs> so I don't know if you saw what I did right there. I placed a limit order. I didn't place a market order. And that brings me to my next point. Ah. We want to make money by rolling coins. So what do I mean by rolling coins? Well, typically, if you look at any particular coin, of course, they go up and down. <sighs> Having problems with Notepad, of all things. Wow. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, so what is a rolling coin? So let's just look at Ethereum uses dollar. Now you can see the actual rolling right here. Red, green, red, green. Um, but let's go look at a 30-minute chart. Let's say for the last two days of Ethereum. Hmm. Trying to give you a good example here. Actually, I had one pulled up on Bitrix. So you see right here, this is a 30-minute chart for the last few days. What is the last like day and a half? So you see right here, you can see how it went way up. So how rolling works is the, the um, coins go up and down, up and down throughout the course of a day. So what you do is you never buy and sell at the market rate. Ah, see, look at that. We already made the money. 702.01, right there, my limit order processed, and we just made that money. So what I want to show you here is this, the prices go up and down. So what you want to do is you never want to market sell. Because first off, on GDAX, if you limit sell, you never have to pay GDAX a fee. So right there, you can trade for free forever because you don't have to pay a fee. But if you market sell, you have to pay the fee because that's how they make their money. So right here, we're gonna. What we do is we basically put an order in to buy whatever currency you want to buy. So I just put that order in. Then. Soon as the order fills, which this order just filled, you're going to put an order in to sell that currency. So, as you re recommended a minute ago, I bought um, about 0.9, so 0.91. So we'll just sell the same amount, 0.9131 Ethereum. But this time, I'm going to sell it at seven. Let's just pick a number. Well, if we look at the last few minutes, um, a few minutes ago, it had 707. So let's just pick 707. Dot. You know, we'll just put dot eighty nine. You know, pick a number. So it has to hit seven oh eight almost. So we're gonna put a sell order on that. So right here, you know, we're not making a big money. We're only making seven bucks. But I'm only I'm trading less than one Ethereum. I could trade a lot more if I wanted to. But I'm just kind of giving you an example. And normally I don't put my buy and sell orders only one percent apart. I put my I, I do it. I don't do it to do a ten minute little in and out in and out. I do it usually for two, three, four day in and out. Like earlier, um, when Bitcoin was at 14,000, I put a buy order in um, to buy more if it hit 13, but I put a sell order in simultaneously with other currency I had if it hits um, 16,377. 16, so what happened is my buy order hit I mean, my sell order hit because uh, two days ago, the coin actually went all the way to 16,377. Um, so it instantaneously sold almost almost a full Bitcoin, honestly. It almost instantaneously sold that. So I increased my buy, my buy order at the 13,000, I think, $700 level, which it actually hit today. So I was able to go back in to Bitcoin. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. And that's what's nice about it, but that was a very big swing. So 
you what you do is you set it like Ron Papil, you set it and you forget it. Just put the order in right there, and now I'm gonna sell it. But right now, you know, we're looking at the numbers. It it just fell down. You know, it just went down a little bit right now, and that leads me to my next point perfectly. You know, you don't want to lose money, and the only way to lose money is to sell at a loss. As long as you and with cryptocurrencies, as long as you bought it at a fair price, it'll eventually get back there. So my general rule of thumb, unless, you know, doomsday, which hasn't happened for a long time, I'm not going to sell. Like that, that cryptocurrency I just bought at 702, there's no way I'm selling it at less than 702. Because I know, with it, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that within the next week or maybe even two weeks, it'll definitely go above 702. So my next general thing is never lose money. So you never hire experts, which I told you about earlier, but you also... Don't panic sell. You know, right now I bought it at 702. It just traded right now for 696. Hey, I've lost what seven, eight bucks since I since a few minutes ago in this video. So I'm not concerned about it. I know it's gonna come back up, especially because I can see. Let's go back to the right chart. So I can see that it's 683 here and 696 here. So we have a $13 difference. And GDAX, so that means people are still bringing, you know, bringing their money in and tra changing that money into Ethereum, because GDAX is where people bring in and out their money, as I said earlier. So those are my general rules. Don't hire experts because most of these experts just want to take your money. If they, if they were truly an expert, their knowledge would be good enough they could share it like I do for free, you know. But my knowledge is. You know, take it for what it's worth. I'm giving it away for free. If you think it's worth something, great. You know, subscribe to my channel. You know, maybe visit my website. You know, I don't, my website's all about mining. So I don't know if you're interested in that, if you're here walking, watching a trading video. Um, but don't panic sale. That's the number one way to lock in your losses. You know, just write it out because eventually it'll be back. The only people, you know, especially if you've invested a large amount and it goes down, also, my general thinking is when something's going up, it's probably going to start going down. And when something's going down, it's probably going to start going up. So right here, you know, I think we're, we're doing, up. Oh, see right there, we're getting some more, more activity. Prices is up, stabilizing a little bit. So that's where the rolling, the rolling coins come in. The, when the price goes up, you set a sell point. So let me go back to that Bitrix, that Bitrix page that we showed you right here. So let me zoom in a little bit right here. So if I was sitting here trading rolling stocks, I mean rolling coins, I would probably, let's go look at the history. So I probably would have sold right here. You know, I probably would have put a sell order in somewhere around here. Uh, let me bring in, let's see, I think we're looking at the wrong market. Let's watch um, Ethereum versus the dollar, not the, um, that was... That was unfortunately um, Bitcoin. <laughs> so let me go to the little part we were looking at right here. So right here, I probably would have already been sold out of position. I probably would have bought somewhere around here and probably put a sale order in somewhere around here. And I probably would have, because, you know, the 5 6% spread is all I'm looking for. And then I probably would have put a buy order in back again around 700 so I probably would have bought right around here and as soon as I put that buy order in I probably would have put a sale order in somewhere around 720 730 which hasn't happened yet so I probably would have lost a little bit of money right now but over the long haul let me just bring you up so about this rolling if you look up rolling stocks there's a lot of really good videos about that a lot of really good websites about that and that is the number one easiest way to make money. You don't need to look at trends. You don't need to look at any of this other stuff. Just pick a good, a good pair. Um, Bitcoin versus Ethereum is a great pair. Um, you could put Ripple versus um, Bitcoin. That would be a really, really crazy pair going up and down. It might be too crazy for you to even handle. And what you do is you, you put a buy order in. And when that buy order fills, you get an alert on your phone. Because you put an alarm on your phone the second you put the order in. So that alert alerts you, okay, you, you just bought whatever the cryptocurrency, you just bought that Ethereum. So you put that buy order in, 
and 10 minutes later, you, I mean, you, you, you log in real quick, and you put a sale order in for, say, 5, 6, 10% below, I mean, you put a sale order in for uh, 10, 15% above that price. And then you wait, you know, it might, might take 10 minutes, it might take 10 days, you don't know. And when that sale order happens, and you've sold that cryptocurrency, you instantly put a buy order in at 10% below. And you just go back and forth, back and forth. Well, let's say most of these coins are rolling three, four, five, six times a month, going up and down, up and down. Some are doing it that many times a day um, on a good day. So you're just putting your money in. So let's say you have a thousand bucks. You put your money in and then you cash it out. Now you have now you have eleven hundred bucks. And then you do it again, rinse and repeat. Boom, now you have twelve hundred bucks. Boom, now you have, you know, you made a say you decide to go a little bit higher percentage. Now you all of a sudden have, say, thirteen fifty. Um, then you you sell it, you buy it, you sell it, you buy it. It's a quick little um, stick. You know, you just put a a couple thousand dollars in there and you just let it go. Of course, me, I didn't put any money in. I mined it all. So if you want to see my other videos about mining, just go look at all the other videos. I'll tell you all about how to how to mine, how to get started on mining, pros and cons. You know, you have all the way down from the very beginning, how to get started, all the way to some, you know, really, really difficult, more complicated concepts. Anyway, will you have a good day? And hopefully we'll see Ethereum going up. Um, where do I see Ethereum going? I, I think, yet again, about the flows of money more and more people are going to be using Ethereum. And in order to use Ethereum, people have to buy Ethereum. And so let's say we decide to add some, you know, little town in Amsterdam that decides to take Ethereum for renting bicycles, which actually happened. And all of a sudden, 10,000 people in that town who've been paying for their bicycles with a credit card now are forced to get an Ethereum wallet. And now a million dollars floods into Ethereum because all these people need to put 10, 20, 50 bucks on their Ethereum wallet so that they can go and rent their bicycles they're going to drive around town. That's just one example of hundreds. And what's going to happen with Ethereum? Are more people going to use Ethereum or are less people going to use Ethereum in the future? I believe it's going to be more. The only thing that would really hold back Ethereum now would either be some crazy fork, some crazy hack. You know, of course, there's a lot of these things that could happen. Or what I would say the most likely thing that would hold Ethereum back is an adoption of some other crypto coin that ends up being so much better and easier to use. But I don't see that happening. I mean, I don't think Ripple's going to be it. I don't think there's enough developers. And the only other coin that has as many developers as Ethereum is obviously Bitcoin. And... Bitcoin is just at civil war with itself, and you know if you their, their fees are just incredible. Coin, so just go to CoinCap.io, like whatever. What was the last fee? Ah, well, it's still propagated. Ah, it's a brand new block. Anyway, lately the fees for Bitcoin have been twenty, thirty, even forty dollars to send. Any amount, even if you just send a dollar, it's going to cost you forty dollars in fees. Um, so it's, I don't see that as sustainable. Fortunately, there are some programmers working on fixing that, and I believe you know the ideas that they have are probably going to work, and that'll be a, a really good thing. So, anyway, a little bit of bonus. What coin would I invest in? Uh, everybody asks me that. Almost every day, someone says, what coin do you invest in? Well, for me, most of my money's in Ethereum. You know, I like Ethereum. If I was investing in another coin other than Ethereum, I would have done really good in Bitcoin Cash. I mean, heck, a month or two ago, it was, less, it was worth 20% less than Ethereum was. So you could have bought a lot of Bitcoin Cash pretty cheap. But most of these coins are way too expensive. Um, I did, you know, there's a lot of long shots out there. You know, some random coin that no one knows about and all of a sudden has a has a 400% day, 500% day. So what about, like, what coin do I think could do that? You know, there's a lot of coins out there that could do that any given day. 
you know, Stellar the other day did that. EOS has gone up. You know, every coin gets pumped at one point or another. But for me, you know, one coin that I actually hold is um, called UFO coin. And UFO coin was an old coin from a year or two ago and pretty much got, was forgotten. And nobody really did anything. Well, then what happened is a whole bunch of new programmers came on board, you know, sometime in November, you know, just a month ago. And they decided we're going to make this coin something. And as you can see, they just did a, they, they updated a whole bunch of stuff, did a brand new hard fork on December 2nd. Um, they, they're doing a whole new core. They upgraded to a new um, wallet system, which was forced everybody to migrate. And they just released mining. They have this, you know, a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, yeah, it's a silly coin with a silly thing, but it's a $5 million market cap for a coin that's definitely, you know, it's going to have SegWit. It's going to have all this stuff. Um, you know, the, the big release comes sometime in, you know, February, and then they're going to be working on March, April, May. And, you know, this is a coin that you can buy you could literally buy a half million of them for not much more than a thousand bucks right now. And what if, what if this coin, this is your star, your star shot, your moon shot. What if this coin hits a dollar and you bought a half million for a thousand bucks? Let's say you bought a million for two and a half thousand bucks or whatever it is right now. Unfortunately, this coin's a little bit hard to buy ever since Bitrix delisted it. And for, I only bought it on a whim, and when I bought it, it was only worth about 10% of it's what it's worth now. I think I spent like 150 bucks on it because I was bored one night. And about a month later, Bitrix delisted it because it was a dead coin. It was truly a dead coin. Um, now, it's probably going to get relisted by Bitrix. It'll probably get listed in a few more places. And you know, now that there's activity on it, there's a good chance this is a coin that can go from a tenth of a penny to a dollar, fairly easy, and make you a thousand dollar profit. I mean, a thousand percent, a thousand times your money. So if you invest a thousand dollars, you could turn that into a million. So that's just my coin. I, I'm, you know, I have fun with it. It's kind of a fun little coin. I do like how it has a full. Um, it has a full wallet, it has a full blockchain, it has, it has mineability, it has everything that you want in an actual coin. You know, half of these coins you're seeing on here don't. I mean, I heard about Cardano ADA way before it went up, and, you know, I kind of threw it off. I didn't throw any money in it. Um, I heard about EOS. I threw some money in it, and then it went way down, and then I kind of said, well, I'll put a sale order in when it gets back to where I was at. And it did get back to where I was at, and I did sell it. So I don't own that anymore. Made a good chunk of money on Stellar. Anyway, don't want to ramble on. I'll just let you go right there. If you have any questions, um, there's a couple groups on Facebook you can go to right now. Let's go with... Um, I don't know what's going to be on my feed. <laughs> so mostly I get Ethereum mining stuff on my feed. So this is my Ethereum group. If you have investing questions, I kind of ask you. This is for mining related questions. If you have investing questions, we're kind of steering everybody towards um, this buying and trading cryptocurrency plus day trading group right here. So yeah, if you like this group, join and... You know, we can, there it is. So ask as many questions as you want here, but please just educate yourself. You can get a lot of really good high quality education by watching videos, by doing the free stuff. Please don't do what the guy in Barstow did and send $12,000 to some, some guy. Please don't. Actually, it wasn't in Barstow. It was somewhere else. Um, but please don't send, don't send twelve thousand dollars to some guy that's going to tell you how to tell you how to trade. Um, don't even send a thousand dollars. Don't even send five hundred dollars. You know, send a, you can send a hundred dollars. But anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. 
Have a good day. Subscribe. I'm going to be making another video uh, right after this about a completely different topic, um, about mining uh, Ethereum and the future of different technologies and cards. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.